So they keep doing it. They keep doing it. Every single camera company will come out with almost the perfect camera. It's almost perfect, but they cripple it. They take something out that we need and they do it on purpose. I know Canon does it on purpose. Canon is the king of crippling their cameras. Every single Canon camera released since 1997 has won a gold medal at the Special Olympics. And that's just a fact, that's just the start. They don't wanna cripple the sales of their higher end models. So they take out the features. It's like, oh, we can't give you that. We'll give you this. It's like macaroni with bread. Here, try that. It's okay, it tastes good. I'm a big believer in that our thoughts create our reality. So I'm going to create my dream camera in my mind and it's just a matter of time before it manifests into the world we know as today. Let's do it. Each camera company has something to offer. In my opinion, Sony has the best image quality right now. Canon might have the best usability with their menus, their touchscreen, the way the camera's shaped. Olympus, best stabilization. Panasonic. I don't really, they kind of, they're the more almost rounded. What? They're the closest we have to putting it all together. They're the jack of all trades, master of nothing. They're basically it, but they're crippled by that tiny sensor. So tiny is that sensor. So the thing to wonder is, will one company finally get it and step up and give us everything we want? Or do we need them just to merge? So merge together camera companies of the universe. So Sonic is. Become one and we will become your love childs. Okay, we're moving along to the features that I want in my perfect video camera. This is a video channel here. I don't give a shit if you're taking pictures of ducks. I don't care, they can quack. I hope they wake you up at night. So first things first, the sensor. That's where we gotta start. And interestingly enough, Canon just released their C700 cinema camera and it's so affordable. I just, I almost bought three of them just to laugh at my wallet still being full, completely full. It's basically the perfect camera, but shrink it in a nanotechnology device and shrink the cost, chop it like 15 times and throw out most of it. It should cost $200. But the interesting thing about this camera is it has a full frame sensor, but it's different, it's wider. I I don't understand this. Why are cameras using this three by two full frame sensor? Is that accurate? It's more square like, whereas video is wider. Why are we using the square sensor? This Canon sensor seems to be designed for videos as the dogs serenade us to sleep. Four minutes later. So basically, Having this sensor in a 17 by nine ratio makes it bigger than a regular full frame sensor because we use that similar ratio for video. I love that. It's going in my dream camera. And it's gonna have low megapixels, similar to the Sony a7S. It's gonna be a beast in low light, but lower on the resolution end. And I'll tell you why. Nobody needs to see the bean burrito you ate last night leaking out of your face. So keeping the resolution low, it's more flattering and it's better in low light. That's two birds, one stone. Dead, dead birds. You didn't stand a chance against my stones. Now here's where I bring in Olympus. We gotta stabilize this bad boy. Olympus seems to be the best. Although Panasonic catching up to the stabilization aspect. So we got an Olympus stabilization, newly designed, of course, for this wider sensor. And I'm throwing in like bungee cords and shit. Freaking bungee cords. This thing's gonna be floating. It'll be so smooth 
that you'll be wondering, was this video shot on the moon? Is what you'll ask because it'll be so stable. You'll just be like, there, that, there's no way that's Earth's gravity. Now, I'm not sure anybody is ready for this next one. So if you have children in the room, put them to sleep. And I think you should leave the room too. I think you should just straight up leave the room for this next one. You're going to be blown away and you're not ready for it. So are you left? You're gone? I, I gave you several seconds head start. So Quadruple pixel autofocus. Frickin' quadruple pixel autofocus. You thought dual pixel autofocus was good? No. Now let me explain how this one works. It can track the movement of your eyes, just the side-to-side -side movement of your eyes, how your iris rotates back that three millimeters. It will track that with an accuracy so accurate it will also track you. You don't even have to be in the frame. It will track you when you leave the frame. It will track you all the way home. It will just follow. It's a safety feature and it will just, it knows where you are. It will continue focusing on you when you've left the shot. That's how good this autofocus is. Quadruple pixel autofocus. When it comes to the body, we're going to keep things light. I want to be able to vlog with this thing, so it's got to be fairly light. I'm thinking 600 grams or less. I don't mind if it's big, but it has to use some sort of like a moon rock alloy that's lighter, something new, some new shit, a new metal, a new plastic, maybe a plastic, a really durable, light plastic, compostable, freaking compostable like styrofoam or something. It's lighter and stronger. That's the whole brilliance of it. Now here's where I'm gonna piss off a lot of people and I'm just, I'll welcome the hate and I'm sorry. But this camera does not have an EVF. There is no viewfinder, shut it. You see this pyramid of nightmares bulking up my otherwise slim design of a camera? It's a nightmare. I promise I will make up for it in my next feature, but let's discuss this for a second. I'm looking to film myself, and I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to film yourself while looking through the EVF. It can be done. I do it all the time, but you don't have to do it. It's stupid to do. I never use an EVF. Even in the sunniest days, I'm looking at my screen. The EVF, it adds bulk, it adds weight. We're taking it out. Get the hell out of my house. As a little side rant about the EVFs, do you really think it's a smart idea to turn on a supercomputer camera and hold it right up to your brain? Does that sound like a healthy thing to do? Does it sound healthy? I made a video about this a long time ago and I was measuring the electromagnetic fields. I know this is some hippie shit. You don't have to go with it. Just let, hear me out. It's giving off the waves and you're holding it so close for a long ass time, especially these sports photographers who are like all day long, <laughs> I got the shot. In my opinion, it is no coincidence that a lot of photographers need glasses. These are not prescription. Don't lump me into that group. These are just for style and sex appeal. They just make me look like a virgin. Some women like that. What do you know? You know nothing. So in my opinion, not only is the EVF unnecessary, it actually damages your eye socket, gives you eye cancer, not yet proven, but possibly. That's why it's not in my camera. That brings me to our newly designed screen that will make up for the lack of an EVF. So most screens right now are about three inches and three inches, that is nothing to sneeze at. That, that is plenty big, that three inches you're looking at like a fun, that's a fun night for you two. But on my dream camera, we got at least, I'm thinking four and a half inches, a 
four and a half inch. I want to go bigger, but I want to be realistic here. Let's be, let's keep this on planet earth. A four and a half inch screen. And it's just so amazing and bright and colorful. It's one of those new like Samsung. We're bringing Samsung in on this one. And it's like a smartphone. Perfect. It fully articulates, obviously. You knew I didn't have to say that one. This screen will be viewable at any angle and in any amount of sunlight. It's just, it has an anti-glare coating. It's bright, it's super colorful, dynamic, 4K resolution. You're just like, you're blown away. You can focus on anything. The battery. Are you, you're not ready. Here's what we're gonna do with the battery. You start, we start with the Sony Z-Line batteries, the new ones that last forever. You take it, you shrink it by half the size, but double its power. Now bear with me, I wasn't finished. You then double its size, which doubles its power again. Now we're back up to the original size, but we've quadrupled the power of it. Why aren't more companies doing that? You might need aliens for this one to figure out how to shrink it and double it and then re-double it and double it again. It doesn't sound possible. I realize that. But that's what our camera has. And we're just happy to have it. There's no recording limit on our camera. We're not, oh, we're afraid to pay the tax, so we have to have a 29 minute limit. Shut your mouth. We pay that tax for you. And we chip in an extra couple dollars. We don't give a shit. If you want a seven hour continuous shot of you walking down the streets of Tokyo, we're gonna give it to you. And congratulations, you have a 900 terabyte file to deal with. Good luck with that. When it comes to frame rates, we got your 4K 60p, we got it, but I take things further with the slow motion. Full HD, 480 frames per second for that cinematic kitten swatting footage with the sound effects. taken at 480p and cropped in further so that's why that looks like it was shot on seven potatoes then you got options to go up to like 2,000 frames per second but the resolution will dip there will be a mic jack with super high quality quiet preamps that are astonishing and an XLR input built right in fantastic headphone jack too, and none of it blocks the fully articulating screen. It's, I don't know where it is, might be on top, might be on the bottom. I don't know where to put it. I'm just the builder of the mind. So I think that's about it. That's my dream camera, the Sonana Nanakas. And it'll be out in April. Just give us a month, we'll throw that thing together. $1,500 just to undercut Sony, just to cut at the A7 III sales, just a little bit. Friendly chop to the kneecap. And that's about it. Affiliate links are down below for the camera. So buy it here first. And if you have any extra thoughts on what you want to see in this camera, post it down below. What's your dream camera? And which company do you think will pull it off? Very intriguing. So we're done. We are done here for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you in the next one.